This is what a weather balloon looks like if you were up there floating with it. It really does have an alien UFO vibe, but it's even cooler than that. It's us. These are our weather balloon platforms at the edge of space, seen by other balloon platforms. We are starting to do more complex stuff at 100,000 feet using multiple vehicles. We are laying down the flight work for advanced, lighter-than-air vehicles working together at the edge of space. Hey, JP here. Yeah, we want to do complex operations at the edge of space. We want to dock, transfer stuff from one floating vehicle to another, and conduct multiple vehicle operations in the upper atmosphere. By transfer stuff, I'm talking about people, research payloads, resupply cargo, and replacing long duration systems on edge of space platforms and stations. We also want to go beyond looking up and looking down and look at our own balloons or airships. You know, it's one thing to refer what's happening from telemetry data, but it takes it to a whole nother level when you can look out directly at one of your vehicles in flight and see what's going on. It's a bit like riding the chase plane. We've started down that path just a little with our toes over the line, getting two balloons next to each other at the edge of space, close enough to take a pick and even gather intelligence on what's happening with the other balloon. Is it stable? Did it have a clean burst? You know, have any of you balloon folks out there done a dual launch or even a big group launch? If you have, give a shout out in the comments. I would love to hear about it. I'm gonna talk about some of the issues with accomplishing that, what it takes to do it, and then I'm gonna tell you about some of the amazing experimental flights that are coming up to take this to the next level. This is Upper Atmosphere Rendezvous, and it is all about logistics. And I mean all about logistics. To get two balloons in the same area of the sky at the same time is to launch them at the same time. Sure, you can have one launch first and have the second one climb faster and then chase it, but then you need to vent helium to slow down so you don't zoom right past it. We've done flights like that with a venting system, but we found it is so much easier and uses less gear, i.e. mass, to launch them at the same time and design your vehicles to have matching climb rates. It takes hours to prepare one of our vehicles for flight. Launching two at the same time means two teams running through the vehicle power-up checklists and conducting telemetry tests. It means two separate balloon fill teams filling the balloons to a precise amount and then prepping the platform's rigging. All four of these teams need to be in sync so the balloons can lift off at the same moment. Checklist practice is the secret key to making this work. We do dry runs of through the whole checklist with the actual folks who will be doing it in the field. It's kind of like when actors have a script read through before getting in front of the cameras. We do the run through, make the resulting modifications to the checklist, and then repeat. We do that process over and over until it's smooth. Only then are we ready for the in-sync launch dance. One of the biggest challenges for a program like this is paying for it all. There are no billionaires here. Each flight has a commercial aspect to pay for it all. This has the advantage of making us very customer facing. But we also have a Patreon site where everyone can join in and be part of it. There's a link in the description below. Check it out. This is the critical part. The climb rates of the vehicles must match. The easiest way to do this is to have identical vehicles. Now this is more than just weighing the same. The geometry also match. 
all of your boxes and antennas need to be in the same place. The drag created by your platform will have enough of an impact on the climb rate to cause a complete miss of the vehicle if they're different. Now you can take the time and calculate the drag for each of your vehicles and all the different shapes and permutations of it, or you can just make them the same. Next, your balloon fill must be precise. Weighing the balloon lift with a scale or timing the fill will not cut it. You need to directly measure the gas going into the balloon. We use a natural gas meter like the kind on your house that we've calibrated for helium. It's easy. They go for about $100 new and can be found used nearly free. If you are flying balloons or small airships, get one. It will be a game changer for your flights. To take this to the next level from just flying in formation to docking, you need the ability to approach, to drive your balloons from one to the other. This is our tandem airship. It uses twin two meter propellers to do just that. This is Hibot, wherever it is, over that way. <laughs> Hibot is a single balloon version of tandem that also has limited maneuverability for approach. Our Ascender, the airships, use another method of moving forward. They use buoyancy dynamic transit. This takes advantage of the ascender's ability to change its buoyancy to drive it forward. You vent helium to descend and the wings allow you to make a moderate dive. You put helium back in to establish positive lift and the wing can convert that lift into forward velocity. This method uses onboard liquid helium to reestablish positive buoyancy to climb. The amount of liquid helium you can carry is the limiting factor for range, but several hundred miles is possible. The wings and changing buoyancy is currently used in autonomous submersibles to travel long distances in the ocean. We have flown 16 flights with formation flying balloons, and we've built 11 airships and three large platforms. We have enough experience that we feel like we're ready to up our game and start flying these vehicles together in more complex operations. You know, our space program is not driven by plasma engines, nor propellers. It is actually driven by t-shirts. <laughs> Get yours today at the Dark Sky Market, our online store. There's a link in the description below. Now for the next phase. We have some big step-up missions being developed to take high altitude operations from just being in the same sky to actually docking. These may seem like simple missions, but when you dive into it, they are pretty complex operations. These are what we call the bump and grab flights. The first is the mid-altitude bump. This mission uses a balloon along with our, one of our small V airships. It will either be the Ellipse 2 that's under development or the refurbished Ascender 36. We launch the airship first. When it reaches 10,000 feet, we launch the balloon. The balloon has a faster climb rate and catches up with the airship. We vent some gas from the balloon to match the climb of the airship and then drive the airship toward the balloon. And then bump. <laughs> I don't think we'll pop the balloon, but it won't hurt anything and kind of will look pretty cool if it does. The next step is the high altitude bump. This is another flight where we get two balloon vehicles to bump envelopes, but this time we do it at 100,000 feet. In this flight, we'll use the tandem airship or the high bot and then move them toward one of the high rack platforms as the target. This is gonna result in some dramatic video as each vehicle will be filming the other 
as they collide and bounce off each other at the edge of space. Then comes high altitude capture. This mission is similar to high altitude bump, but this time we make them stick. To attach, we'll use a simple long carbon grapple pole, like the one we used on Away 75 as a long camera boom. It also serves as a demonstration of high altitude retrieval of a balloon, either to get a payload back without the need of dropping it on a parachute or plucking something out of the sky that shouldn't be there. On a very simple level, we've already done one bump mission. Here's two of our balloons that got a little too close together after launch. The only real difference between this and a bump mission is that we actually want to do it on purpose. However, that flight was an experience builder, and that really is the main requirement for success in the upper atmosphere. So these are just baby steps into what is possible for operations at the edge of space. They will be critical for upper atmospheric telecom, exploration, security, research stations, and even settlements. Take your balloons to the next step. Fly them together. If you want to stay in the loop on what's happening at JP Aerospace, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you up top. JP Aerospace, America's other space program.